polyprotic acids. But essentially, you're calculating. I uh, suppose so the first thing you do in a problem like this is try to find out the equivalent, the volume for the equivalence point. So you're doing. And I'll put a 1 over 1, because notice even in polyprotics, first equivalence point, the second equivalence point, this volume is equal to this volume. If you titrate each hydrogen, one hydrogen plus one hydroxide, or vice versa. So it's always important to know that, because it tells you the type of calculation. So we're doing 40 times 0.15. X times 0.2, and you say two hundred times about thirty milliliters. So there's the equivalence point. What problem do you do with the equivalence point? Hydrolysis right, problem we just talked about. And in between, buffer. <coughs> and notice there's the half equivalence point. What did I say about the half equivalence point? It's equal to Yeah, it's pH. And I said if you spend 10 minutes to prove it, you still only get one or two points because I don't put a lot of points on for the half equivalence point because it's so easy. Unless you forgot it, then you have to prove it. Okay. I say this and you still see people when they get to the half equivalence point. They calculate the moles of the acid, the moles of the conjugate base and everything, and they come out the same and they cross it up. You're, you're welcome to do that. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's still only one or two points, depending on how generous that was there. Okay. But those are buffer problems. In between, those two are the buffer solutions. What's this one? Excess. And since you're adding, what, NaOH, you have 15 milliliters excess. Concentration is 0.2 over the total volume, which is 45 plus 40. And once you know the OH, you can get the pH, the POH, and then the pH. Or you can do uh, 40 times 0.15 minus 45 times, because this will, this will be the limiting reagent now once you pass the equivalence point. And you calculate the same excess mole, millimoles of hydroxide. So it doesn't matter which one. Yes? What's the denominator again? Oh, 85. The, no. oh. It's, it's the amount in the right here. Oh, I added it wrong. It's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm past the equivalence point. This is how much you added, this is how much you had to start with. So this okay. is some of those things. Some, I usually put this in there, but I didn't put it in this quiz. And the book usually doesn't when it talks about that. But what's happening in here? Assuming the volume is additive. So you started with 40, you added 45. You started with 40, you added 10. So the total would be 50. Okay, so there's the titration curve. I saw my drawings and everything. First of all, let me go this. There are different ways of preparing buffers. One is the one we just did in the quiz today. Okay. So you add the acid and the salt together, and you have the concentrate, the problem we just did. But you can do it by also taking a weak acid and adding a strong base, because as you add the strong base to the weak acid, you're making the salt. You have a mixture of the unreacted acid 
and the salt you've produced. Or there's the wheat base. In other words, on this side, he's just talking about basic buffers. Here he's talking about acidic buffers. And so if you take something like the last problem, where we had And if you add some, uh, this gives you and if you add some OH minus to it, that's what you said, you're going to use up some of this and you're going to make some of the weak acid. So it gives you three different ways of getting to a buffer solution. The most common ways are this way where you take the salt from the acid, uh, salt from the base, or you add hydrogen ion to the base, <coughs> or you add hydroxide ion to the acid, or you take the salt and the acid. Now, one of the reasons the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation here is so popular among biochemists, and I guess biologists too, uh, when you're trying to grow different bacteria and things, you need to have a certain pH. So you have the optimum conditions for those things to thrive in your, your agar, whatever you put the stuff in biology. People, well, you have to take your biology and you'll get that mixture. Yes. So you have to calculate the pH for putting this, the mixture together to grow bacteria. And what you need to know, you pick a pKa that's close to the pH you want, and then you need to know this ratio so you can adjust the pK up and down to get to whatever pH you want. So that's why it's useful, because they'll be used twice as much of this as this, or vice versa, to get the pH. So they know this number because they know what they have in their shelf chemicals. They know this number that they want to end up with, and then they just solve for the ratio of the base form to the acid. And if they start off with the weak acid, they know how much um, they start off with the weak acid up here, they know how much sodium hydroxide they have to add to get to the right ratio. So that's a little chart for different ways of preparing the buffer uh, for people that have to prepare buffers. Calculating changes in the buffer solution, in other words, you calculate the pH of the buffer, then you do you add something, that's the calculation I did for you the last time, and the pH changes, and now you calculate the difference. Notice again he does it with Henderson Hasselbach, where again all you're doing is changing this ratio. That's what I tried to emphasize when I did those calculations, where I'd always pull out that ratio and then I'd put in the different numbers afterwards. Okay. So all you're doing is adjusting the acid conjugate base ratio if you're talking about a base. It's the base conjugate acid ratio to get the pH changing slightly. Here are different indicators and their color changes at different ranges. Uh, we're not going to learn any of that, but what I want to get to the next slide. Boiling point, both acid and base have a neither acid or base are present in excess. In other words, the equivalent point. The difference between that, and here he does the end point, the point at which the indicator changes color. If you choose the right indicator, you're in good shape. Here's titration, adding titration curve, uh, pH versus volume. There's so what I wanted to get to. Here's milliliters of titrant down here. Here's the pH. Notice right here, equivalence point 0.7, he must have been titrating what? Strong acid, strong base. That's the titration curve I started off with. But notice the different indicators are going to change at different places. If you happen to use alizar and yellow for that endpoint, it's going to change up here around pH 10. You're going to have this much volume as a titration error. That wasn't a particularly good one. Right in here is phenolphthalein. It's off from the pH 7. It changes between 8 and 10. But notice the curve is so sharp that there's only a small titration error. That's the one we used last semester, if you recall. So each indicator changes at a different pH range, and they all have their different uses. The most common one is being a failing. It's a cheap. Everybody recognizes colorless and light red or tinted red. 
And there's the reverse. We started with a, uh, what do they say, strong base. Start with a high pH. You go down as you add the volume of the titrant. The pH goes down. I mentioned it would be the mirror image of that. Um, and I said if I talk, if I gave you the example for the acid titrated with a base, I might ask you for a base titrated with an acid. That means you start at a high pH and go to a low pH. Then there's the weak acid, strong base. This part of the curve looks like the strong base part of the titration curve we saw before. It has a nice, start, deep, nice steep rise in here. But here, we start off at a somewhat higher pH. It has this funny little behavior in here. Then it slowly goes up. And notice it doesn't go as sharp as it did in the strong acid, strong base curve. And your choice of indicator is a little bit more critical. Methyl violet has a smaller, methyl red has a smaller titration error than before. Oh, what point is this right here? Must be the half equivalence point. H is equal to pKa. If you look at the volume, it's about 12 and a half. The equivalence point right here, 25. I just, I, I drew some curves for you and they didn't look as neat as this, so I pulled this one up. And there he wrote what I just wrote. Solution of weak acid, then we have buffer, hydrolysis, excess strong base. Okay. Those are the different points you have to worry about on a titration curve. As I said, here on the last quiz, I told you different chemicals were present, and I said you have to sometimes recognize the type of calculation by the chemicals that are present, but if you're doing a titration curve, you always know um, what type of calculation to do. If you calculate the equivalence point, 